second episode of Kicking It Live for the 2015-2016 school year. I'm Kendall. And I'm Abigail. Coming up in the show, we take a look at the new athletic directors LARPing homecoming nominations in 9-11. Let's begin with a look at how two of our UAHS family members were impacted by 9-11. Today marks the 14th anniversary of the tragedies that took place on September 11, 2001. Senior Grace Brethel shares the memory of her uncle who was a fire captain in Midtown Manhattan and killed on 9-11. On that day, he was actually leaving work, and he was leaving, going off of his shift, and then like the first plane hit, I think, around 8 o'clock. So he got on a fire truck and like, grabbed the priest from across the street because he wanted to like bless the site, and they drove down to Ground Zero, and since he was a captain, he was on the West Side Highway with other captains and battalion chiefs, and they were making squads to go up into the buildings, and when the second tower fell, it fell directly onto the West Side Highway and crushed him and the other battalion. Mrs. Moore, freshman English teacher, shares her experience of witnessing this tragedy while living in New York City at the time. The morning of 9-11, my roommates and I woke up late, and we lived about four blocks from the World Trade Center, so that was the subway stop that, that we visited to go to work, and so we were scurrying around. Um, I remember leaving a little bit before my roommates, and I walked down, got on the train, and I had realized that I had forgotten a videotape that we used um, at work to kind of review what was um, what was going on in, in an interview that we had done with a client. And so I started to get off the train and then I kind of remember hovering between the platform and the subway to the, the subway car, trying to decide whether to go back and get the video or to continue going to work. And I had this moment of doubt where my gut was saying, you've got to stay on the train. And my conscience was telling me, go back and get the video so you don't have to dub a new one. And fortunately, I listened to my gut and ended up taking the train up to Midtown to my ad agency, went to work, subsequently found out uh, that in the time that I had walked down to the subway and rode the train to Midtown, the first plane hit the, the towers. And so I would have emerged, had I gone back to get the tape, I would have emerged kind of in the middle of that big mess. And so because I listened to my gut, um, I ended up uh, being spared from, from getting involved in, in all of the, uh, the chaos that ensued afterwards. And so uh, to make quite a long story short, the rest of the day, um, another friend of mine and I were looking basically for my roommates. So my roommates were um, caught in all of it. Um, like, I, like I said, they had left a few moments after us. Um, and so it was, it was a moment of, of really kind of confusion. Once I got to work and I went down to dub a new tape, I saw the second plane hit from my boss's office. I saw the tower, kind of the smoke rise out the window so I could see that it was happening out the window. As the days went on, you would also see signs up and anyone who had a missing poster sign placed up by friends or family um, didn't make it. You knew that there, I think there were very few exceptions, but um, I remember seeing one of those posters for a friend of mine's boyfriend, and, and we had just seen him a couple weeks before. Uh, so it was crazy. Um, and I, you know, I ended up, I was meeting my, um, one of my best friends to go take the train in Penn Station out of the city, um, kind of two days later, and she saw a poster of, of him and just kind of screamed because you knew at that moment that that person was gone. We truly appreciate Grace and Mrs. Moore sharing their stories. And now to Sarah and Sam with sports. Hi, and welcome to sports. I'm Sarah. And I'm Sam. The boys soccer team finished up their game last night against Dublin Durham with a 1-1 tie. The boys are 1-2-3 and three on the year. Volleyball had a big game last night against Marysville, and our girls pulled off the victory. They moved for a 3-2 on the season. Congratulations to senior Anna Steger for committing to play Division I basketball at Western Carolina. Anna joined sophomore Dane Goodwin as players to commit to play at the next level from the Casey program. Congrats, Almond. Now look at our new athletic directors. Tony Pusateri, and uh, first of all, I'm so proud to be at Upper Arlington. For me to get the job here is really an honor. It really is to be the athletic director at Upper Arlington High School. I went to DeSales High School 100 years ago, 
and uh, and you knew about Arlington then. As a matter of fact, when I played football at the sales, we played Upper Arlington, but it was at Jones. And uh, the last 11 years, I'm going to say a cuss word here now, so I was the athletic director at Dublin Kaufman High School. <laughs> so, so, but now I'm here. My name is Kathleen Coughlin. I'm the assistant athletic director. My transition has been great. I'm coming from Whetstone High School. I was the athletic director there for the last three years. But at the end of the day, I could not be more proud to come back and serve as the assistant athletic director here. This is where I graduated from, so it's kind of true what they say. There's no place like home, and so I'm very happy to be back. You. A. Go Bears. Bears. Colin was an accomplished athlete here at the high school. She was a state champion as a part of the track and field team. Although there were a lot of spectacular athletes in action this week, we had to highlight one in particular. <laughs> Athlete of the Week goes out to senior football player Danny Logan. D1 Dan had 200 total yards of offense to go along with two touchdowns in the Bears' victory over Mason last Saturday. Head out to the football game tonight at the Marv and support the Bears as they take on North Park, Ontario from Canada. The theme is America, so deck out the student section with red, white, and blue. The Bear Den is planning a fun stunt with the student section between the first and second quarter. This involves a domino falling effect, so when they throw it in front, you fall. <laughs> After everyone falls, red and white streamers will roll down the section. So if you are planning on attending, please cooperate and have fun with it. That includes you, freshmen. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to that bowling ball effect. I hope you guys uh, do a good job with that. It's the first time I'm going to see it. Um, Students, I want to take a moment to thank you for a great start to the school year. I also want to thank you for your attention and respect you showed during the transitions between second and third period. Obviously, today is September 11th, and we are also hosting a team from Canada on a, on a day where our, our spirit is red, white, and blue. And so with that, there's a lot of uh, responsibility on our part, um, being a host to a Canadian team, an international team. When we play the national anthem today, and when we take a moment of silence at the stadium, I want to see our student body representing the United States and our Washington High School with the utmost respect. Additionally, we will be playing the Canadian national anthem, and I want to see the same respect and, and honor when they, when they play that for their team. So I look forward to a great game, but I want to see our student body representing the U.S. and our Washington in a great fashion. Thank you, Mr. Thiago. And now we'll take the lifestyle with Elizabeth and Sydney. Elizabeth. Behind me we have artwork featured from Paige Higginbotham, Katie King, and Katrina Mulligan. Thanks ladies for sharing your art with us. Are you interested in having a, stu a mini study abroad experience in Spain next summer? There will be an informational meeting for the trip to Spain sponsored by the Spanish Department next Wednesday, September 16th at 6 p.m. in room 249. This is right before open house and is for students who are not yet enrolled for the trip. Apple recently announced that there will be several new emojis, including tacos, unicorns, and squirrels. We can look forward to seeing all these new emojis in the upcoming iOS 9.1 update. Now we take a closer look at LARPing. <laughs> LARPing, otherwise known as live action role play, is a year-round sport where participants can express their feelings through reenacting battles. How did I get into LARPing? I needed aggression therapy. Uh, I was actually walking through one of the Columbus State Parks when it was up in High Banks. Uh, the group was up there. I saw them randomly and the rest is history. <laughs> the age group of LARPers tend to range from 15 to 40, but everyone is welcome. I mean, we're uh, so open about people coming from, I mean, we don't care about your background. As long as you come out and have fun, that's what it's about. If you're interested in LARPing, feel free to check it out at James J. Thomas Park on Sundays at 1 p.m. This has been Sydney Thomas and Elizabeth Gearhart from WARL. If you would like more information on LARPing, feel free to join their group on Facebook titled Black Fire Pass. In other news, Awesome Sauce, meaning extremely good or excellent, has recently been added to the Oxford Dictionary's online version, as well as a couple other dozen new words. And now to Trending Fun with Jack and Nathan. Welcome to Trending Fun. I'm Jack Stummer. And I'm Nathan Martin. This week we got to know our senior class officers a little bit better by asking them a few questions. What are your guys' roles as class officers? So uh, as class officers, uh, I did prom last year and I'll be handing graduation and all those beautiful parking spots you got, that was me. Um, Chris Autos, just as vice president, helps me with my homework. Uh, Will Wildling as treasurer handles my bank accounts. 
and Cole Oftenkamp as secretary is off getting my groceries. So if you had to compare your three colleagues to uh, former presidents, who would they be? Um, Will Wyling, class treasurer, is for sure most similar to um, George Bush. I'm going to have to give Dane Tomaszewski, Ronald Reagan, and then um, Nick Carsados, probably Bill Clinton. What are your plans for senior graduation? Uh, we're just going to try to make it an overall memorable experience. Uh, maybe try to convince the auto to bring out some fireworks. You know, just have a great time. How have you managed to keep a firm grip on the vice president position after three long years? Well, I mean, it's been really hard. Lots of hard work, working on my speeches, memorizing them. But really, when I was the only one that you guys could vote for, it came down to a simple decision, and thanks for voting for me. We wish the best of luck to all of our class officers as they hope to send the class of 2016 out with a bang. On a national scale, a surprising independent has been hanging around in the presidency race the past few weeks. Dee's nuts jumped onto the scene of the presidential race and has gained the approval of many in recent polls. According to ABC News, Dee's is preferred in 9% of North Carolina households. Dee's, also known as 17-year-old Brady Olson, hails from a small town in Iowa of just 197 people. Even though Olson is a well under the 35-year-old presidential age limit, about half the states allow such candidates to appear on ballots. Fort Fortunately, Ohio is one of these states, so if you're a voting age, he's one to consider. I agree. Everybody has been looking for someone like Dee's Nuts as a fresh face of American politics. Now to J.R. and Ed with What Does the Bear Say? Are you pumped up about our first home football game? What you say? The USA theme is going to be really fun because I have a lot of red, white, and blue. Should be a good game. I mean, it would be nice if I, would, if I would go to the game, but I don't think I would be there. Um, I'm just going to go to see Micah Schuster eat a hot dog in one bite. Um, I think that since Canada is big, it's going to be a big game. Uh, I don't think I'm going to watch it because I don't speak Canadian, so I won't be able to understand. I think their rundown is looking pretty great, but I think they're going to have some uh, challenges that they will overcome. But I'd like to see this go down tonight. Thanks, J.R. Ned. We're going to announce the homecoming nominations in just a moment. But first, Math Club meets next Tuesday at 314 in room 203. Diversity Club is having their first meeting next Thursday at 7.15 a.m. in the first 4LC classroom. All are welcome. And now to the homecoming nominations. <laughs> Starting with the boys in alphabetical order, Nick Amore, Ethan Bellamy, Jack LaBeouf, Carl Jacobson, Nick Carsados, Julian Kroll, Danny Logan, Jared O'Brien, Chase Fister, Tyrese Spate, Will Sullivan, Danny Tomaszewski, Nick Trifilis, Cam Wade, and Isaac Wonderlick. In alphabetical order, the nominees for the 2015 Queen's Court are Annie Ackley, Anissa Awad, Macaulay Brown, Hannah Ewing, Erica Hartmus, Elise Hummel, Kelly Kale, Marley McGuire, Katie Myers, Claire Mooney, Megan Morgan, Caroline Sarno, Mary Nicole Scott, Emily Song, Francis Sullivan, Ellie Watchman, and Madison Wolf. All nominees need to report at the start of 8th period today to the main office to meet Ms. Brown and Mrs. Diarmo. Congratulations to all nominees. Homecoming is Friday, October 2nd, and the dance is Saturday the 3rd. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and have a great weekend, Bears. Can I kick it? 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 Well, I'm gone.